All right. And I'm going to hit live on the... Uh, we should be live in Entourage here in just a second. All right, we are live over here now. Okay, that's that's live in Apex Entourage. Good evening, Entourage. All right, let me jump over to your page and I'll share it on my feed if you want to say hello to everyone, mate. I'll be back in just a second. A little sharing going. Yeah, we're just sharing this out, guys. And if you're seeing this while we're sharing it, do us a favor. Share it some more. <laughs> or comment or leave a thumbs up. Let us know you're here. And um, if you've got questions for us, post them in the chat and we will get to them. We'll ask our guest, who Brian is about to introduce, right? Yes, sir. Let me just do a couple more shares right here. <laughs> you share it too many times, Facebook will kick you off. Yeah, I just share it to my group. Uh -oh. We're trying to share it to entrepreneurs too? Let's see if we can send it to entrepreneurs. I, no, we're, we're live streaming in entrepreneurs. I'm live in entrepreneurs. It's live oh, in. Live? It's in the group. Oh, you yeah, it's in the group. No? Oh, no, no, no. I'm live in entrepreneurs. Shit. Oh, fuck. There's too many E's. Yeah. All right, I'm going to share it to entrepreneurs <laughs> and then we're going to go. Go. It's a good. It's a good thing. This is the 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 pre-show. This is before the show. Yeah, Greg says this should be fun. He's right. It probably should. <laughs> there we go. Let's put this on the noise right now. This is the worst intro you've ever done, Brian. Come All on. All right. Oh, now we get intro. All right, we're going. All right. We're shared around. We're spreading the love. And uh, Mary, you got it shared. Let's go. All right. Cool. So we got Mariana, Keith on tonight. Um, Mariana um, is um, she's basically badass. <laughs> sums it all up. Tax accountant. You see that? Tax accountant. Um, what else we do? We said cocktail waitress. That's that's something. That's oh, a new yeah. one I learned today. Um, mm -hmm. We do whatever it takes, right? Single mom, uh, military <laughs> wife. At before you were single mom, um, so you've done the military thing. Lived in Germany for six years. Um, life mm -hmm. coach. Um, 75 mm -hmm. hard guru. She got her own group. If you've seen her in her group here, and 75 hard posse. And um, what else? Uh, what else am I missing? What else do you do? She drives uh, two hot I cars. Mean, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do have damn sexy cars. Um, um, I'm just. I like. I always tell people I love being your hype girl and your cheerleader. So and she's just love motivating this. the fuck out of people. Yeah. That's it. So I met Mariana. Uh, we spent some time together down in Tampa at Stacey Rasky's event. Uh, I missed event. the invite to that. I yeah, totally listen, missed you had to be on the inner oh. circle to go to that one. And, uh, yeah, I don't think Stacey takes me. I was quite disappointed. I'm going to have to lean on her a little bit. you got to go to the next one. It's uh, February, I think, the next one, right? Definitely got to go. Hey, mm. hey, as soon as I get that invite, man, I'll put it yeah. on my calendar. Yeah. Like, damn it, Stacey. Yeah. Yeah. I went last minute. I, we were like, at live. I woke up. I woke up and y'all are in Florida. I'm like, what the hell's going yeah, on? Listen, you know, you got to be in the know here, man. So, but no, that was a good time. And then. So we did the exercise where you stare into each other's eyes for five minutes or whatever, and you get to see... Oh, you weren't joking about that? No, that was real. No. <laughs> yeah. So the whole room... I thought you were just... So you're staring into each other's eyes for five minutes. Yeah. It's, it's pretty you, cool. It's a pretty let, cool Let exercise. me guess. You talked about whatever came up, right? <laughs> no. <Hey>. You... <laughs> oh, you got it. That's just you got a the second. joke. Just a second. Just a second. <laughs> so that is a pretty cool oh, exercise, I'm though. I'm talking about you rolling. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, talk talk about that exercise. What 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 on earth do you gain from looking at someone's eyes for five minutes, other than watery eyes? Um, you actually kind of look into each other's soul. It's a really weird experience. Um, you almost kind of start like breathing and vibrating together too. Like you're like kind of just getting sync. Like it's really, it's just a weird weird thing. Like if you ever were, never were did you it, were you matched in opposite genders or or not? Uh, like, it was all different. It was all, you know. Whoever you were sitting next like, to, because even even if that's even if that's completely non-sexual, it must be really weird to do that with a guy. Like, it's very strange. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you but you like you're start sitting there them, and like, yeah. it's like you a try and not laugh, and you yeah. try and not like your eyes get twitchy, and you're trying to be serious, but you don't want to be too serious. So, like, I It'd think like at that. some point, <laughs> at some point, I had to like just like stare straight into Brian's yeah. like the back of his head, not just keep looking at <laughs> yeah. his eyes. But you, you get to a point where you do, like, not that, you, I don't want to be all weird and cliche that you, like, feel each other, but, like, you get real synced up real fast. Like, over, like you kind of laugh, and it's kind of, like, silly in the beginning, you kind of, and, like, all of a sudden, it kind of just, like, you feel like you're like this, and all of a sudden, it kind of just connects, and you're, like, all of a sudden, you feel like you kind of almost became one for a minute, and you're kind of, like, seeing what's <laughs> in their brain, you know? 
<laughs> Fucking Wiley's Wiley's posting the comments. The comments are lighting up, but Wiley posted he said he got paired with Chris Whitehead. Yes, he did, yeah. <laughs> that must have been about the scariest guy in the world to be paired with. Yeah, yeah. No, Chris <laughs> So, uh, but that was a really neat exercise. It really, uh, you kind of like, I don't know, you see into each other's soul. It's and, really kind of. And neat. Greg, wait, now so many people have posted that, like, I'm feeling left out because I haven't done it now. Yeah. Greg just posted Aww. he did it too, and Wiley. And I, yeah. I just, I'm going to have to borrow some eyes to stare into, aren't yeah. I? <laughs> that's it. That's it. So, <laughs> yeah, so that was, this, uh, that, that was a fun exercise. Go ahead, actually. Man. Yeah, that was a fun exercise. Um, uh, who initiated that? That was. Uh, Stacy, was it? Yeah, Stacy was that right? Who was the speaker when we did Stacy or Stacy or Patrick? I can't. Oh shit, I can't. Wait, no, was that Chris that introduced? I thought it was Stacy. Oh, know. Nicole says she does it weekly. Uh, Greg says I can stare in his eyes. Let's <laughs> 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 read these fucking comments. I, I gotta tell you though, you gotta do it. Like literally, like all seriousness, it's it's really wild. Um, I'm a, I'm fucking I'm a walk out of there pregnant. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, no. I mean, shit. I don't, I don't trust you, Brian, at all. So <laughs> I got six, so you know, you never know. You so, think you'd have learned? Yeah, you think I would have learned? Yeah. Uh, listen, never say no to sex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so sometimes on. maybe. <laughs> I know it's like that's, Stop drinking that's a too. Super you know, it sounds like a good idea that, at the time, but then you know, that's a superpower, man. You got to be able to say no. <laughs> you just have to. <laughs> like so. Anyway, welcome right. to the uh, the the train wreck. Train wreck um, of, uh, <laughs> of uh, yeah, get some fire. So um, yeah, so we want to chat with Mariana. Yeah. What is, and she's really new into uh, Apex Entrepreneurs, right? Yeah, when did you join? That the group mm -hmm. she's in. That the group like in? Uh, right at two, maybe maybe three months almost three months in all right newbie yeah i'm at uh, i think i'm on yeah. seven months now i joined uh let's see yes i'm six and a half months Pushed i just jumped up i'm i'm just finished up my second month in execs so i'm even though i feel like i belong in execs i'm not worried about like imposter syndrome for the first time in a long time um they've been incredibly welcoming it's like drinking from another fire hose. It's like walking in and knowing nothing again. You're just like, what in the fuck? Like, there's yeah. so much more to learn. Um, but I feel like I feel very closely attached to the uh, the entrepreneurs group, and um, I don't know the rules, but I'd like to I'd like to still keep if I can swing it. Like, come up to the entrepreneur meetups as well because there's still right. a tremendous dude. There's so much value in that room. Like, and plus, like. I came through there. Room, you know, when we get together and smoke cigars, the value that comes out right. of that is right, and the friendships that are there. You know, so yeah, I'm gonna make every effort to to attend all the stuff that I can. Um, but executives is like it's 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 not like starting over, <laughs> but it feels like it. You open a whole other door, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh shit, there's even more to do. And then you're like, yeah, so you just you you move up and you hire more people, and you, you it's just like balancing plates, man. It's 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 ridiculously complicated but it's very very rewarding when it all comes together um so how are you liking entrepreneurs so far mariana not brian because we know you love it <laughs> i really love it honestly um for the first i would say three weeks i was like what the fuck did i do i don't belong here um i messaged danny i think when he was in cabo and i was like hey really think i need to back out it's probably not the place for me i don't know what i'm doing all these people got their shit together and i kind of <laughs> just at that point fooled. like <laughs> and i'm all fooled. i kind of like at that point i became super vulnerable he him and chris like chatted me back and they were like no don't give up you're good you're in the right spot this is where you need to be and I started just kind of head first, like diving into just being super vulnerable. Like, hey, y'all, I'm fucked up. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do. I cannot find my damn ass from my elbow right now. Somebody needs to help. <laughs> and I was probably in, I don't know, 15 phone calls in the next 10 days with people just like firing off different ideas. People helping me like basically map my brain and figure stuff out. And then there was the Apex Live event. And so kind of going into that event and knowing a whole bunch of people virtually um, made me feel incredibly comfortable. Um, and so I feel like I made instant best friends with everyone. And, you know, 
I'm not a spring chicken. So I've got a lifetime of friends under my belt, but this is the first time that I've really felt like my brain, the way I think, the way that I'm trying to process things, the speed at which I want to run at things is fully embraced in this, um, in this group as opposed to anywhere else I've ever been in my life. It's that's, that's exactly why I like it. Like, and you know, uh, if you're on another planet, like the planet that's sitting behind you there. I put it on like, a moon. Yeah, yeah, I thought that'd be fun just, just, to, just to change. Uh, <laughs> kind of what it feels like, you know. Just um, to change things up. But we're all fucked up, yeah, though. Yeah. That's, that's, but the, and one of the reasons I love Apex and uh, to an extent, you know, why I put the Small Business Surgeon podcast together is because, like, you said it where you walk in a room and everybody's got their shit together and you're the odd one out. But what you don't realize is about all the guys that have their shit together, um, they've all been like exactly where you're sitting they've all been walked in that room and gone wow fuck everybody's got their shit together than me but when you start having conversations with them you realize that everybody fucked up whether they've got their shit together now or not you know there's there's a lot of people in apex that are still like going through that getting it all together it takes time it's a it's a it's a long process and don't feel scared for for being a fuck up um i wrecked and crashed a fucking seven figure company into the ground by being an alcoholic um you, you know uh chris has a famous story about wrecking his truck with a dui you know like every single person in the group has has fucked something up so you know and i know you know it now coming in the door three four months later you're quite comfortable mm -hmm. but that initial impression where um i don't belong here everybody's got their shit together we don't like I've got my shit more together than most people, but I still don't consider it together, you know, and um, everybody's agreeing. Everybody in the comments is putting their hands up. I think that's know? why it's so important to really dive into <laughs> Apex, to dive into talking to as many people as you can talk to. The more people that I connect with on the phone or live or all these events, um, you realize that like me and Sam realized that we were probably separated at birth when we smoked cigars at, uh, what was that? That was an entrepreneur meetup, I think. It's about Three months ago? Um, and we start this about three months yeah, ago. Yeah, it was... Right? Yeah, it was after the entrepreneur it, I forget which one it was. Dude, right? I'm, we had steak yeah, we, we, we went to steak after, with Thomas. Yeah. We went to steak with Thomas and Greg, and then we slipped off and smoked cigars after us. Yeah. Um, yeah, everyone's going and getting drunk, and we said, you know what? I was kind of cutting out drinking a little bit, and Sam doesn't drink, so we said, let's go smoke cigars instead and poison ourselves that way, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not that I don't drink. <laughs> I just figure if, if I drink for all 70 years of my life, I've probably had 70 years worth of alcohol by the time I reached 36. Yeah, so, so, you know, we're, we're good. I'm all caught up. I'm good for the next 35 yeah, years. Yeah. You know, if, if I get to 75 and start start needing a little alcohol intake, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that when we get to it. But, you know, I'm, I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Man. But, like, the, the whole world of entrepreneurs is like, by design, we're fucked up. We don't fit with, with people. We don't fit that convention of, of the nine to five and the fucking white picket fence. And, you know, I, I quite like my fucked up normal. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, I really do enjoy it. Imperfectly so, perfect. Well, perfectly imperfect. Yeah, perfectly imperfect. No, That's it, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to keep practicing. Yeah. So the 90-year-old cellist that practices every day when asked why he was practicing is kind of like, because there's still room to improve. Like, there is. There's, you know, perfect Always. system. So talking of improving and entrepreneurs being fuck-ups, and unique that leads us kind of saw i don't is it, is it too early to get into your next business venture that's coming up mariana or do you want to talk about your current stuff because we could we could go either way but it, it segues nicely and you know loneliness and fucked upness and blazing our own trail into your new business venture so where do you want to take this yeah yeah we can we can go that that direction that's fine i'm down for whatever all right so what's your new business venture um so i am moving into full-time um life coaching i a little bit of backstory about me. It took me about 14 years to get my bachelor's. Um, I was a single parent at 17. So um, that got put on hold quite a bit. And um, when I finally did graduate, my, um, my degree was a uh, bachelor's in science with interdisciplinary studies with minor in Christian counseling and life coaching. And so I basically just tabled that and was like, whatever, I probably will never do anything with that. And I uh, went on to do taxes while I was living in Germany. Um, kind of accidentally fell into that, but enjoyed it very much. Um, but come to find out, I really just enjoyed the money. 
um, I was making quite a bit <laughs> and I, t- right. Every year I turned it into a game. Like, you know, I was self-employed commission based. So, um, I'm turning and burning, you know, clients and I'm just like, you know, tacking on new certifications each year, learning more and more and just grinding it down to where I can knock these things out left and right. So it became a game of how much money can I make? And I'm really good and I'm proficient at international tax law and, um, small business and, and rental properties that said, I don't love it anymore. And I don't like the, um, the tax law changes that are coming about the last couple of years. It's just made my job incredibly difficult and unenjoyable. And then couple that with, you know, still working internationally in Germany. So traveling back and forth, splitting my time away from my girls has been, um, a huge challenge for me. I did not enjoy it at all this year. Um, so it's brought me a culmination of a lot of life experiences. And really in the last um, three months since joining Apex, um, you know, when we're talking about what we did the last 90 days has placed us in the spot where we are at now. Everything mm-hmm. I've done the last 90 days, 75 hard, um, challenging myself, becoming more vulnerable, putting my entire story out there for people in like clips and chunks and sharing, you know, my 27 months separation and divorce that was just finalized last week like all of those things the more i'm vulnerable and the more i share the more people are in my inbox asking for advice and wanting help and wanting to talk and that's where i'm most passionate and once i completely stopped focusing on what can i do to make money and get out of the tax accounting space and i started focusing on what i can do that's going to make me happy that i'm passionate about that helps other people Mm-hmm. everything started to kind of fall that's into like the place. key question right there that is the key question like the transition and, that we all find like when you realize that wow i can help people and that's better than any money you can make and then the it's money not about it's it. not about money the like money it's about the, the, impact. the impact yeah you, mm-hmm. like you make the impact the and the money follows yeah it's, uh, but it's so easy to say happy. now like because after a year of doing it or you know i've been doing it 20 months now um mm-hmm. 21 months it's so easy to say now but when you're used to a certain way of doing business and when you're used to money coming in one way to take that and throw it to the wind and throw caution in the air and go, you know what, I'm just going to give value and to trust mm-hmm. that system and to believe in it was, it was incredibly difficult for me. Um, but once I made the transition, started focus, focusing on people and impact, um, everything just started to get better. And I was telling Brian before, I think before you got on, I mean, like, business for us has never been this busy like ever Mm -hmm. it's just and it's all referral it's all word of mouth from the internet so we we couldn't be happier yeah you got to give to the universe and the universe gives back you know and it's like uh i still don't understand that it It just just, works just you know it just works works. well the the simplest way for me to try to break it down is have you ever tried to give away a smile like if you walk around a room and you try and give away a smile you look at someone and smile genuinely at them Mariana, mm-hmm. they will smile right back at you. Look, there you go. See, smile mm-hmm. right back. You can't get rid of a smile. Same with a fuck you. Like you cannot, like you flip that off. You're immediate. The universe sends you one right back. Yeah. True. And mm-hmm. it's just taking that, that status and saying, you know, if I give out a smile, I'm going to receive a smile. Mm-hmm. Therefore, if I give out kindness, I'm going to receive kindness. If I help somebody attain something that's joyous to them, I'm going to feel the joy in my heart too. Which is the weirdest fucking woo woo shit I could even think of saying. Yeah. You know, I'm sitting here with, I've got forearm tattoos, I've got partial sleeves, and I'm talking about sending out love into the world. Yeah, and man. it's the weirdest thing <laughs> to say. But like, it's real. And everything it's not changed even, when, uh, I, like one when for I adopted one, that. You know, I, I had a, it's not, no. a morning thing about like helping people that um, are against you, like helping your enemies. Because you, when you do that, you give it to the universe. If someone hates you, but and you have the opportunity to help them, and you choose not to, you kind of hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. But if you have the opportunity to help someone, and even if they don't deserve it because of how they treat you or whatever, you still need to help them because you're helping the universe, and the universe realizes that. And whether you call it universe, whether you call it God, however you want to define it, it gives back. It's like we just got to keep giving, giving, giving. And, and you know, people show up in my life. They call me up. They say, I need this. I need that. Whatever. Opportunities show up in front of me. Um it's just kind of wild, the stuff that's, that's happened. And I just put a $1.4 million deal in contract that was uh, basically generated off my We Ride a Dawn follower. Um, someone that follows my early morning message 
um, connected me with this property. I connected it with a client, and we just put a $1.4 million deal under contract that wasn't on the market, that strictly came from my morning message. That's how I got the lead. I mean, it's just wild. That's how it works. It's just wild. You know? I mean, it's it's not as big a number as yours, but I put one under contract today. Um, the listing was from a guy that follows me on the internet and has become a friend. And the buyer was somebody that listens to the podcast and called about a house. Yeah. Like, it's all from the internet. It's all from being helpful and being being good. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's why we're here on a Monday night, right? Trying to just if, mm -hmm. if one or two people get anything from this, then it's worthwhile. Get back a little bit. But we got off track. I still don't know what your new business is. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get back on track. Um, so I'm going to be launching a coaching group in January, and mm -hmm. it's really just going to be how to build your authentic badass, whatever that looks like to you. We're going to be putting together the different elements, basically starting with your confidence. There are far too many people who don't believe that that is an element that will launch you and propel you forward in so many areas of your life. Um, so building the foundation around the confidence, being authentic, being who you really want to be, not who people are are. Mm -hmm placing a stigma on you to be. There's so many people who are scared to just say what they feel mm -hmm. because they have been conditioned over a lifetime of just generational um, expectations and those need to go away. It's 2022. Shit is way different. We're about to launch into some weird, crazy world and it's time to just be more authentic. We need to follow the things that are going to push us forward as entrepreneurs, as individuals, um, so basically we're working on building our machine inside of Apex Entourage and the different places that we're, we're paying attention to our businesses, but are we paying attention to building our best, our best version of ourselves? So, um, really want to focus on, um, taking those elements of, you know, where am I at with what I'm doing in my personal life? How am I treating myself? How am I treating my family? How am I? paying attention to the relationships. I really have a lot of individuals who are single who want to get together in a space of um, not necessarily matchmaking that's going to come long term, um, but kind of building the best version of ourselves to get the other person that we want in our lives. There's a lot of really fire relationships that we're looking at and have as um, platforms for us to pay attention to in the spaces that we're in. So, I mean, Ryan and Amy Suman, for example, there are a lot of people who want that best friend, power couple, um, you know, run at your goals type of relationship with someone, but they don't have the time to find it. Um, and so I kind of want to be that connector for a lot of different spaces in the life coaching um, and space to, to get all of that connected. Yeah, that's awesome. And me and Sam have talked about that a little bit too, about the idea of, um, you know, when you're an entrepreneur level and, and it's just like a different breed and then you know, connecting with people that are kind of in the same headspace as you, you know, not just in a dating world, just in a, in a friend world that, um, you know, you just get each other. You just understand the struggle and you understand why you're staying at the office till 10, 11 o'clock tonight because you're trying to get that proposal out. And they understand that, listen, we got to work this weekend because we got this project due. And, you know, they understand that. And it's not, oh, how come you're always working? How come you had to pick up that call? That call was just <laughs> worth a bunch of money. That's why I have to pick it up. I'm sorry. I have to pick up that call, <laughs> you know. And mm -hmm. um, if you're not in the entrepreneurial world, um, a lot of times people don't understand that. And, um, you know, so, so. It's like if you don't get it, you just don't get it. Yeah, you just don't. Like, like, like why do you have to answer that call? Because, you know, Well, that's, that's, that's just how this paycheck, works, you know? man. <laughs> you're like driving exactly out of your car, that's why we answer the call, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and especially I mean, entrepreneurs coming into a space where, you know, you know, like Brian, you're established in your job. You are a single individual. You have a lot going on in your life. You don't have time to swipe. You don't have time to vet through all of these people who are like, oh, yeah, I'm really cool. How can you tell through a dating app that this person has the same type of goals and like life like charge that you do and they want to run parallel to you? You can't find that. You got to spend time finding that. It'd be much better if you had like a love liaison to <laughs> sort go. through all of that. <laughs> is that, is that what, you, what you're branding this as now? The love liaison? <laughs> that's a, that opposed, sounds like somebody that just shows up with flowers and lube. You're like, <laughs> I'm Mariana, the love liaison. This will be your hotel Hello. suite. <laughs> God, no. Oh, I don't even shower now. That's nasty. I want to see that. Uh uh. Love liaison. Shit. But, <laughs> I mean, even as far as friends, though, 
I mean, it, it's hard as, as an entrepreneur. That's, that's why I've clicked so fast and made so many good friendships in, in, in Apex is because, like, dating aside, even when you look at, like, your regular relationships with people, you, you outwork and you outpace and you outflank these guys and you out-accelerate them. And then you, do you go back and have the same conversations with the same group of friends? It just doesn't work. It, it's like, and it, it's heartbreaking because you, you have really strong friendships, but the relationship just isn't there anymore. Like, it's like, how do you, how do you find people to relate to? And again, that's why, that's why Brian and I have clicked. And that's why I've got a lot of friends from within Apex because they know what it's like to fuck up. They know what it's like to have to answer that phone call when you don't want to answer it, all that stuff. So, I mean, is that a problem? You, you think you can solve that in the dating world? <sighs> completely solve it no i would like sorry to i wasn't eliminate... gonna put you on the spot my bad <laughs> i would really love to eliminate a lot of that bullshit for people i mean we have as hard chargers we have so much time in a day i mean shit i feel like i need five assistants i'm just not at a spot to <laughs> to be able to do that yet until then i have a ton of stuff on my plate that i want to get going most entrepreneurs have multiple revenue streams you know they're getting in lots of different spaces. That's very important to them. I know personally right now, that's more important to me than investing the time and vetting to find the proper relationship to be in myself. I don't want that right now. But I know like if you were to come to me and be like, hey, I am like ready. I am working on my, my businesses. I have done this, this, and this. I'm ready to put someone in my life. I want my person be like, all right, well, how much time a day do you have to dedicate to that? None. I'm trying like to none. make millions right now. Leave me, yeah. leave me alone. So, so give me an hour, two hours. Let's go through. What do you want? What do you think you are? What does that person look like to you? Specifically, have you written down every single thing about this person that you want right down to? I like bearded men, but I don't like super, super long beard. Like, why are we trying to have a marathon with this beard? I like kind of beard. You know, have you written down specifically every single thing you want in a person so that you're not accidentally getting hit with Susan who walks in the door? You're like, oh, she's really cool. She's pretty. She meets like 80% of what I like. This will work because it's here. If you're not intentional and specific about that, if you're not making the effort to have that as a part of like the front, forefront of your brain, you're going to compromise for something. And that's how we have shitty relationships later. So let's be intentional about what you want. And then, okay, let me go pull into my network of people because a lot of people like to talk to M for some reason. So mm -hmm. I got a lot of people in my, my space talking to me about the single life and their, their issues right now. So let me go see if I can pull somebody out of that that might fit you. Or you come to me and you're like, hey, in this network, I like this gal. And I'm like, mm, but you don't want to muddy those waters because there's a professional relationship and rapport you want to keep. So I'll be like, hmm, let me see. Oh, no, 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 she's not for you. Keep moving, brother. Or, yeah, okay, here. So I want to try and, and take out some of the frustration for entrepreneurs to make it easier to make something like that happen inside of all of these different networks and millionaire masterminds and different places that people who someone in your caliber of dating pool would be yeah not at the pub brian <laughs> no <laughs> not at the <laughs> pub yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no i like that when you can with someone and you can talk shop with them we can talk about you know whatever it is you know financing employees you know whatever mindset um you know it's neat to have you know to have conversations like this with someone it's uh you know it's nice and if they can't then kind of like doesn't matter how hot they are, it kind of you're not really interested. Dude, I might get shot for saying this. Um, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the way my schedule is and the amount of time I spend working and on multiple projects and then the priorities of my kids, my biggest luxury is peace and quiet. My biggest joy is sitting by myself somewhere quiet not talking, not answering a phone, maybe reading a book, maybe smoking a cigar, maybe playing my guitar, but quiet. That is the biggest commodity in my life. And when I look and go, you know, do I want to come home to somebody? Do I want this kind of life? Yeah. Yeah. But boy, I value that peace and quiet. <laughs> you know, I, I just like, and I start looking at that schedule and it's like, man, I've got 45 minutes free 
after 9 30 tonight no i'm sitting down i'm not you know so it's like it's it's this trade-off do i do i want to leave my world of of like unmitigated peace and quiet like i have the ability to lock my doors turn off my lights run a bath and watch my ipad till my heart's content you know it's like i don't know if i want to mess with that yeah you don't (laughs) real men don't take baths come on Real men aren't afraid to get in the bath. Like, I mean, alone or? Hey, <laughs> the, the, hey, I don't know about you, mate, but Mariana will attest to this as, as not a real man, but still close. There's nothing like getting in a bath at the end of it. Like, you go play, like, you go play a fucking soccer match. Tell me you don't get in the bath after it. It's just shower. like, no, you, you like the therapeutic power, power of a hot shower. <sighs> fucking, you can't tell a New Yorker anything. Just try a bath, mate. You, you'll like it. Just try it. <laughs> I put the yes, bubble tub in my house, and we use it three times, and now the kid's playing it. Well, that's your own fault, mate. Like, for, for my money, a, a bathtub is, is, is one of the best investments you can make in yourself. In English, mate. it's Yeah, maybe it is, but you can, <laughs> you can lay in it, chill out, the water's... Do you, do you take baths? Can you weigh in on this, Mariana? Before you get take baths all the time. That's a normal thing, you know? <laughs> Guys take baths. Like we, do, we have to have a poll. I have to be in a very special like mindset to be able to enjoy it. Like, you know, our brains are crazy. I really like if I'm getting in a bath, I want to be able to be like completely slowed down to enjoy that. Otherwise I'll be like, All right, I've sat no. here for three minutes, time to get out. Like yes, the water the, gets the cold, point. you like this sucks, then you get out and you gotta no, take a shower because no. you feel like I'm in dirty the, water you can now. Turn, you, shower. you can turn the water on with your toe. You're just not but <laughs> What you said about mind space, yes, that's why I take a bath. That's, yeah. you know, shit. I might take two or three a month, like, but it's the quiet, it's the peace and the quiet and being able to protect that time and just have some room in my head for me, because when I get up in the morning, like I'm checking messages, and when I go to bed at night, I'm exhausted, and I just need that little gap. And then, do I want to trade that off for? For a fight about not paying the utility bill on time or some shit, I don't know. Well, not really. The wrong person, and if you're see, fighting. Yeah, she well, should have paid the bill already. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> well, and that's kind of where I I definitely am in the same space right now. Um, I really enjoy that I don't have another person right now to think about their day, whether it went bad, whether they've got stress. I only have my own stress to worry about. Um, the people that I am, you know, dealing with right now and the work and my client load, that's what I have to deal with. And then, you know, my kids, I have teenagers. Um, so dealing with their stuff, I don't, um, kind of like what you're saying, Sam, I like, um, (laughs) I have maybe 45 minutes, (laughs) 45 minutes to an hour, you know, to myself, um, Sometimes maybe more, but I want that. I want that for myself, unless I could ideally just fall into a situation where somebody's like, okay, I'll sit next to you and we'll read books together. And like, we can sit and be quiet next to each other. Like there will just be that, that space. You can't instantly fall into that. That has to be intentional. And I, you know, you need to be in the right headspace for that. Mm -hmm. You need to have your business at the space where you want it to Mm -hmm. be. You need to have delegated enough to where you can take time to do date nights and do all these other things. So definitely needs to be people who are wanting to be in that space not definitely not for everyone yeah then what happens when she's an entrepreneur and she's got a business and and she's working you know 12 13 hours a day then that's that's where you guys have to each ask yourselves how much do you want a relationship in your life at the time are you at a spot where you're willing has your business hit a point where you want to carve off people and place them to delegate so that you can give that time to someone else are you how, at what age or at what point in your life are you going to make the determine that that's a priority to you? Because it has to be. It can't just be like, a, oh, I kind of want to date because I'm lonely on Sunday night. If I'm being honest, Sunday night's my shit kicker. That's the night where I'm like, all right, I might be a little bit lonely. Might want someone to like sit on the couch with, maybe cuddle for 45 minutes, <laughs> you know. But the rest of the time, I'm very busy. But I do know that I will hit a spot within probably the next year, 18 months, where I want to be intentional with carving out time for a person. But in the process, I don't want to accidentally stumble into what I call the dick sand. I don't <laughs> want what? to find yeah. it. <laughs> this one's good. I call it. <laughs> what was the second half the, of that word? I heard the first half. The, was it sand? Quick sand? sand. 
Oh, like, like sand. Okay, like dicks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. That that's all right. Funny. We yeah. sink in. We know what it. Yes, you fall what? into that shit. It's hard to climb yeah. out. So, especially I want my if list the dick ready. is really good. Uh, thank you. <laughs> there you go. I need that. I need that list ready to go. So, in the event that some shiny ball comes walking by, I'm like, Mm-mm, you don't hit one of these things on my list. I'm gonna keep. Nope, I'm not falling in your dick sand today. Sorry, pass. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's like, that's like it. Ladywood. We got some good terms out of this uh, show. Uh, oh my yes. god! Where did the fuck did Ladywood come? That was so oh, Stacey, embarrassing. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, was, I just about, <laughs> I just about died. <laughs> fucking Ladywood. <laughs> Talking about erect clitoris is on my fucking podcast. I'm like, I didn't know where to look. I was just mortified, and she thought it was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's what we love, Stace and Mariana. To keep I it like real. Dick Sand. I'm gonna write that down. Dick Sand. <laughs> I wish you'd buy that. Yeah. Is there a, fe- so, is mean, there a female equivalent? <laughs> I have it. Well, uh, the only thing I could think of is like the Venus flytrap, which is probably a lot of women. <laughs> like. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty fitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> I just totally spat that water out. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I literally am funny for minutes. I got content for minutes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> like, I have been totally in the trenches today. First day back after Thanksgiving, completely covered up. I've been busy from, from dawn till dusk, and this has been just, this is fun. And, and, and ja- Jamie, or is it Jamie, or is it Jamie? Jamie, says, Jamie, Jamie, yeah. Jamie says Jamie says no one likes dick sand. Nobody likes the dick sand. Jamie, Jamie and I got to hang out in Vegas last weekend at the Thrive event. She's amazing. She's my new bestie, too. She's oh, a realtor she's... in, um, oh, shit, I'm going to lose it. She's in Virginia. Virginia, I think. Shit. DC, she's, maybe. She's shit. in Apex, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, send her, we'll send her a friend request and see what's up. All right. She'll probably reject it. <laughs> 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 all right what's next so, what are we do we're talking about dating executives or entrepreneurs or some shit i don't know where we're going with this. i like that this is my i like that this is my laid back podcast and yeah. <laughs> not my serious <laughs> it's much more fun in fact tell us about 75 hard yeah. i want to hear about that because um i am a little soggy around the midsection now um owing in fact to like it, i've always been on with my fitness uh, I've been trying since I got in Apex and never found that mental switch to go every day. So I go in spurts and um, I watch the scale and the scale fluctuates between like 220 and 235. Uh, right now it's at like 236 and I need to get back to 220. So I was thinking of jumping in with you guys Do on it. this program when you start uh, on Wednesday or is it tomorrow or Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Seven days tomorrow, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. And, well, um, Brian, yeah, Brian's already seven, but we've got everyone starting December first. Um, don't think about it; just fucking do it with us. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. yeah. I'll get right on it. Yeah. Um, drink, so, drink water. Yeah. I, I was too. Let me spit it out. <sighs> fucking dick jokes. Um, Seventy-five hard has yes. completely changed my life. I'm not even gonna lie. When I joined Apex, and I was, I had already started. Um, it was probably one of the things that gave me the confidence boost to join Apex because I came in like cold calling. I was like, hey, I'm here, y'all. What's up? Like, yeah. nobody brought me in. I was just like, knock, knock. So um, I just showed up. And um, then when I had I had emailed um, Danny, I was like, I don't fucking belong here. Um, I was like, I really just need to focus on 75 hard and get that done. And he was like, hey, sister, you know, you don't need to build the machine all at one time focus on what you want to focus on right now. So that's what I did. I, you know, I got silent for about three, four weeks, ran at my 75 hard. And then that's when I started to pop in. And that's when I started to pay attention to apex and get more involved and get vulnerable. But that gave me the confidence to do that because when you, you know, I had a lot of travel days in there. I had one of my best friends lose her husband at a very early age last month. Um, I had a lot of travel I had three weekends back to back where I did Dallas, then Florida, then Vegas, ending my 75 hard in Vegas. Um, I've had a lot of days where I've been in the car at 4 a.m. and I'm not getting home till 2 a.m. and I'm doing a workout at 2 a.m. Or I'm flying, you know, I flew to Texas. (laughs) Yep. I flew to Texas to visit a friend. And, you know, when I got there, I had to go and run in the rain at 1230 at night, you know, but those 
those workouts in the middle of the night when you are by yourself and it is raining and it is cold as fuck are the ones that make you realize that like you can do anything. You mm -hmm. really can do anything. All of the shit you thought you couldn't do, all that inner bitch shit, like <laughs> you are like seriously, holy shit, I'm a badass. I can do all of this shit and more. There's not a single motherfucker out here on my street right now walking at 2.30 in the morning. I am yes. killing this shit. Mm -hmm. Cops used to like stop me like, and like, what are you doing out here? It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm getting my workout in. Like, what? Yep. Mm hmm The stairs are unreal <laughs> I real when you're, you know. So I got my workout in. The other, uh, what was it Saturday night? Saturday night. Um, it was my daughter's birthday. We watched birthday. TV with the kids. I fell asleep on the couch. Uh, woke up. I don't know. I guess it was probably it was 1230, something like that. I go downstairs and I'm like, I didn't get my workout in yet. So we jumped on the treadmill at one o'clock in the morning. We did our workout and then we closed everything out and then we went to bed for the night. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I got my time in with the kids, like, you know, because I didn't want to go do the workout, you know, while there was festivities going on. So we let everything calm down and then we uh, did our workout before we went to bed for the night. And you know what this at one o'clock in the morning when you're kind of like, is anyone going to know if I didn't do my workout? And that's yeah, you know. That's where you win the world. You know. That's where you know. You're you like, know. I am not mm -hmm. going to bed without this workout. And you're kind of like, eh, maybe I could skip it. And you're like, no, can't do it. Got to do it. You can't. And you get on no. the treadmill. You and, you, and, they, and I started tired. And I was I read, I read, was reading Stacy's book at the time. And just about finished with that. And, um, yeah. You know, and then you think about, like, who else in my circle, when we talk about, you know, with your friends and, and relationships and all that stuff, is on a treadmill at 1 o'clock in the morning, committed to themselves to do what they committed to it's like maybe like one percent maybe like it's mm -hmm. you know like right here on the screen you know what i mean it's so <laughs> unless you've done 75 hard and you understand the struggle of one o'clock in the morning i still gotta get a workout in or i think gotta do my outside workout and it's 20 degrees out and yeah you know, I'm, I'm doing easy now because i'm 182 days into we ride at dawn so the halfway point is tomorrow do you count uh you count your morning bike riders yeah, workout, mate? Okay, ride. yeah. And so then, uh, well done by the way for making it six months. Yeah. Congratulations. That is awesome. Congratulations. Miles a day, yeah. hundred and so we figured we did uh ten miles a day, that's what, eighteen hundred miles on a bike, but then in the summertime I do more on the weekends, so it's about a hundred miles a week. So we're probably well over two thousand miles so far in the last six months on the bike. You could have avoided all of that if you just bought a car. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if I didn't eat so much, and then I'd be skinny, and I wouldn't want to lose weight, you know. So, but um, Dude, I, you know, man, I I crashed out at seventy five hard a couple of times, um, and it, it's so weird because you think, oh no, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll get it, I'll get it, and both times for me it was injuries to where like I couldn't I couldn't move. Um, the first time I tore my calf muscle, I've never felt anything like it. It just it opened like that. It was like opening a like fillet in a chicken breast and I, I couldn't barely walk for six weeks i couldn't run for two months and so yeah i could have gone all upper body and stuff but it was like it was time to stop and uh the second time i squashed one of the little discs in my in, in my spine i'm um, doing too much weight thinking i'm fucking 20 years old and i'm not you know you, you load up mm -hmm. the you load up the leg press and your your big muscles will do it but your little muscles man they're you, you, it, it, you yeah. don't realize just how long it takes to get back into a, a serious workout. And the longer you leave it, the more work it yeah. takes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should I should have just gone every day. I should have just kept going to the gym when I was eighteen and, and gone every day. But yes, did uh, you get never did. And you get fat and drunk, and then you got to start over and get back. You I I got very out. I got very fat. Yeah, the real I mean, five I hit when I did my highest. I was I was about two eighty five was my highest. Not I didn't get it. I was. I was 240, almost 240. How tall are you? 5'2". Okay. I lost 100 pounds. Yeah. 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 yeah that's, how'd you do that? You didn't mention that at the beginning of the show. <laughs> it took a long time, um, honestly. Um, I had gastric sleeve surgery back in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and so it restricts everything for you. But you have a lot of work you still have to do. Like You have to completely change how you eat. Mm -hmm. um you have to alter your your whole lifestyle um there's no such thing as diet it's, it's lifestyle i mean it's not oh, it's, all it's a lifestyle it's, yeah you know when i go out um, and you order cheese fries i go out and order a shrimp cocktail you know what i mean it's like it's mm -hmm. a big difference so like you know when it's just the choice oh, yeah. you make every day you know it's yeah yeah can only have cheese fries mm -hmm. twice a week now mate yeah i know 
<laughs> Sorry, calories at one sitting or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. But no, I, I, I dated a girl a little while ago that had lost like 100, 110 pounds. And she had gone from a, a, a depressed housewife to a personal trainer. And, you know, she, she was certified in personal training and started getting personal training clients. I mean, it was an mm-hmm. amazing journey for her. So what did it feel like to lose like that much weight? Did you notice at first or was it just very gradual? Um, well, it was, it was rapid, but also gradual. Like I, um, I didn't want people to pay attention to it. So I, you know, it was winter time. I kind of like covered up a lot. I, cause I, the last thing you want is to people for people to draw attention to something like that when you're just trying to like get through something. Mm-hmm. And, um, I have always been a, a fairly private person. So I really didn't want anyone to know that I was trying to lose weight and, you know, I was pre-diabetic. I was in obese class three. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, so nice. I didn't really want people to know about any of that. Um, I had a lot of mixed emotions after it took me right at about a year to lose all of the weight. And afterwards, um, you know, as a prettier person, you get treated better. Well, um, yeah. And I, I struggled with that for a little while because I was like, I've always been this fucking cool, y'all. <laughs> like yeah, why are like, you just now treating me better but because you can you can body shame all you want but yeah. in reality like it's the ultimate status symbol being in shape and looking after yourself and you know it it's one i'm i i would love to have i'm working towards it but when let's go back to dating like if you're in a dating pool and you have a choice between somebody that's obese or somebody that's not what does it say about decisions that the obese person makes? What does it say about their decision-making abilities, their lifestyle, their accountability to both themselves and to their family? I, then you start saying, well, if this person is this way about that, then they're not going to align with me on these, these other factors. And exactly. it's not that fat women aren't, or fat people, I guess, aren't attractive. It's that maybe they don't have the work ethic and the character traits you're looking for in a dating partner. Maybe that's why you get treated a little bit different when you start to become more attractive to the dating pool. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But um, like, it's definitely a huge confidence builder. I mean, for me anyway, I mean, the 305 pounds, I was fat. You don't realize how fat you are. And you look back at the pictures, you're like, dude, I I saw one of your Facebook memories yesterday. I was like, Whoa, that dude ain't Brian. um, So I think in my, I lost 80, probably my highest. When I, not a 222 was my lowest from 305. That was after mm-hmm. 75 hard phase one. Now I'm back up like 20 pounds because life happens, and that's why I'm back on. Yeah, but cake hard. is also good. Cake is also good. Everything, <laughs> in, mod- everything in moderation. Yeah, um, yeah you know what? It's I like, couldn't. It, I couldn't imagine a life without cake. But um, but again, you know what? It's I, like, I can Yeah, it's a, I it's want to be in shape more. Moderation. Like yeah, I can, yes. Like I like to be able to take my shirt off because. For when you're 305 pounds and it's summer and you're on a beach, like yeah. you take your shirt off and you're like, wow, I'm a slob, you know? So you leave your shirt on. Now it's like, mm-hmm. I'm still kind of a slob, but not that bad. I could get my shirt off now, you know? So it's <laughs> less slobby. But you know what? It's a confidence builder that um, <clears throat> it's just your whole swagger that you get. That Like when you realize that, like, you know what? You know, no one looked twice at me and now I walk into a, a place and mm-hmm. girls are checking me out. I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. Like I never had that before. I was always the fat kid, you know? And it uh, it definitely gives you ego and confidence, and you're like, oh, shit, you know, what? I could do this, you know, I, you know, people love me, they like me. Mm-hmm. Well, we tolerate you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, it's definitely a confidence builder you have, like I said, and and it, honestly, like I said, I guess um, even in a, in a sales world, if you look at successful people, the people that are forward facing, um, most of them are in shape. Most of them are, you know, they got their shit together. And it's all they, part mm-hmm. of the whole lifestyle. You got your business together. You got your health together. Yeah. You got, I mean, it's if you can't. Be, you, it's how you do one you thing. It's how you do everything. You can't perform without the others. Yes. You, know, you can't be yeah. 300 exactly. pounds and then be successful in your business because it's not working. It just doesn't work. You know, it's just so. Um, and he said, even myself, I'm still, I want to be skinnier. I want to be more in shape. You know, as I look at some of these dudes in Apex that are jacked and I'm like, I don't want to be jacked. We- I'm not, I don't want to be jacked, but I want to freaking be able to take my shirt off and feel confident. You know, it's like. Yeah, but yeah. the higher up you go in the entrepreneur world, like the more and more in shape people are. I feel like I can't go any further as an entrepreneur until I get in better shape physically. Yeah. Like I feel that. 
Like yeah. that is when I look at my weaknesses, my last big weakness that I wanted to address was reading. And now I've addressed reading and fitness is the monster that I've got to tackle. Um, we ride it you know, brother. Uh, ride with that coffee. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. now you have to start on Wednesday with us. I'm going to make you my, yeah. my new bestie. I'm going to be it. checking in with you. Mm. You have to now. Mm. now you have yeah, to. I'll get right. I'll get right on that. Yeah. She calls mm-hmm. me every morning. Mm-hmm. She calls me every morning. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> Sit. Be committed now. No turning back. Why? I've been. I've been committed. You've been committed. Been, yeah. 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 Committed. Let's go. Well, you. You know you want to commit to it anyway. You know that this is what you need to do. So um, it's not like we need to prod you into this. No, you don't. Um, I, I'll I'll do it with a caveat. Okay, um, I am trying. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off because of visas and fucking vaccine passports and quarantine shit. Uh, I am trying to go to England at the end of the year. Um, just go back home, visit some family, just use that gap right around Christmas, New Year, and just slide on home. And if I go home, you are not stopping me eating my mom's cooking or <laughs> any of that kind of stuff. So I'm like, if I don't go home, so I'll start 75 hard. I'll start yeah. it with you guys. And You might have to restart. If I go to moderation. England, I'll restart. So, like, so like I follow like a Weight nah. Watchers program where... Like, you know, <laughs> He's like, no. Yeah. You don't get it, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> pies, <laughs> like, this, fish and chips. Like, no, nah, <laughs> you don't get it. Like, And then mom's food. No. Yeah. No, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go home to England and eat fucking lettuce for two weeks, man. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I can eat that here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to go on this trip. <laughs> yeah, we're going well, on a field trip. Yeah. Let's go to England. Yeah, let's come go. on. I mean, I'm just waiting for the nod to go start Apex UK. <laughs> let's do you it. know, get get paid to fly back and forth. I'd be quite happy about that. You know, so. do it. I'll come join you. Um, I've never been to Europe. I need to go. I have a house in Italy. Let's I mean, go. I know it's not super close, but well, yeah, that's, that's not close to England at all. <laughs> nope, not like at all. Like but that. it is. It is closer than here. <laughs> you can ride yeah, my bike there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you, you could do a five-hour, you know, Euro trip or Euro wings trip. Five hours, right? What is Euro wings? Like um, the the, um, airline. I've never heard of it. But then again, I don't get out much. Mm. You know, Um, I know for for a while they had cheap fares and were... You could fly across to Amsterdam for very, very little, but I think that's all gone away with uh, with COVID. Um, I really don't know. I've, I've not been since it all started. I was supposed to go of April of 2020, and then obviously not a chance. Mm-hmm. And then I just I haven't really I haven't really messed with it. And you know they're, they're very um, very vaccine conscious over there. I have some very good discussions with some of the guys I went to high school with that are now you know college professors and shit like that. Um, their outlook on it is so different from mine because their echo chamber reflects one way and my echo chamber reflects the other way. And so, you know, we swap information back and forth and we swap points. And I try to, I I try to be an educated man by considering all the angles that come in, but man, I, I just don't know what's going on. It's like the whole freaking world's lost their mind. Yes. Except for that's on the surface. Like everybody in my network, all the entrepreneurs I know, all the people here in Texas, everybody I know, no masks, no vaccines, don't care. Let's get on with life. I think it's because, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just so strange. People that use their brain and people that follow, you know, lions, not No, shit, it's right? not. It's the, it's the messages in the media, mate. It's the bought and paid so, for. It's the fact that propag- propaganda's we legal. Everything as a, as a propaganda's legal, though. You question everything, right? You question well, if yeah, this but, is a good deal. You question if this is the real stuff. Like, you question if this, you know, you question everything. Do, do, you know, do you know how many people are successful entrepreneurs, mate? Fewer than 3% of the population of the country, mm-hmm. right? So... Uh, I don't know. So, you know. That's why we say we, you know, you're in alien life. You know, when you're an entrepreneur and you get that idea. It's just, I don't know, dude. Your brain differently. Like, a lot of us are ADHD, and Mariana, we talk about that a lot. ADHD, ADD. You know, our brains are wired different. We think differently. We act differently. You know, like it's just, and and I know in my world, the people I really connect with, when I really start talking to them, they're ADHD, ADHD. Like just we get each other because you understand how your brain operates, and it's different than I guess a lot of the world. Um, 
I, I think it. ADHD is just like a, the, a deficiency in learning to focus. I think ADHD can be, can be worked out and overcome. Um, yes and no. I don't know. It's, it's um, you tend to be highly creative. I think it's actually, I, yeah, I think it's amazing. It's a superpower <laughs> if it. you can harness it. It's just, yeah, yeah it's, it's difficult. You know, shiny balls occasionally, <laughs> a little bit hard. Dick sand. Um, shiny balls. But yeah, you know, I... <laughs> I heard um, uh, at the Thrive event, Andy Frisella spoke about the American mandate, basically, and um, his whole point and everything that's happening in the media and, and everything that's being pushed on people. Um, I mean, even Joe Rogan's it, talking it, about it now. Yeah. like It's even, coming to the top. Everybody's like... We have a country being run by 80-year-old fucking morons. Like... It's our job as entrepreneurs. We are the backbone of America. We are the ones who can make Believe. tangible change yes. inside mm -hmm. of our businesses, how our employees are treated, what we require from our employees, whether or not mm. we're going to have to mandate something. So if we are the backbone of this country. It's our job as entrepreneurs to live by the American mandate, which is fucking do hard shit. Make yourself a hard motherfucker, work hard, give to people, and, and lay a baseline for other people. Charge the way. Like, this is our voice. This is our country. We have an obligation to be badass motherfuckers. Sure. I love that. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Now, if we but, could everybody say it at once. Yeah. Like, without getting uh, too deep, because we're, we're about out of podcast time, but, like, like, every reasonable adult can look at the election results and go, that doesn't look quite right. Like, not was the election rigged? Was it not rigged? Was it stolen? Was it not stolen? Just that doesn't look quite right. Mm -hmm. Maybe we right. should invest. Maybe we should have, investigate this, or maybe we should start replacing voting technology and start voting on the blockchain. I don't know. Maybe yeah, you know. And the, the, to say that, then when it comes back in the media, is branded as racist. Mm -hmm. Well. Black people can't vote because they don't have voter ID. That's bullshit. Every black person, every person I know, if they want to vote, they can go vote. Like, I, I just don't understand why we haven't becomes, got this. Uh, it's divide and conquer. That's what it's all about. They divide us, you know. You go into yep. anywhere I go, no matter what the race, gender, whatever, everyone gets along. And then you go into the media and you think everybody hates everybody. You go into Apex. Like, I mean, there's people of every nationality, every gender, whatever. Yeah. And everyone gets along, everyone hangs out, everyone helps each other, one love. Every brown person, yeah. every fucking white person, every black person. It's right, but then if the mission. media was in there, they'd be all of a sudden mm -hmm. everyone's against each other. Oh, you know, yeah. you're disadvantaged yeah. and whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, and right. at the end of the day, like, none of that, at the end of the day, none of that shit matters. Like, we have an obligation. Like, the media is going to fuck us left and right. They're going to do what they want. The agendas are out there. It's controlled. Follow the fucking money. At the end of the day, none of that matters. What matters is what we're doing as business owners, as entrepreneurs, how we're paving the way. If, if we don't have the power and influence, somebody else does. Mm -hmm. So we need to fucking take it. We need to lay the groundwork. We need to do the hard shit. We need to build the character. We need to become the very best at what we do. Andy Priscilla said, for the purpose of acquiring that power and influence. Specifically so another motherfucker cannot have it. Yes. What he might has a line he says all the time in a world where hate makes headlines, goodness needs to speak up. Because all the good people are so busy working and doing what they do, they mm -hmm. they don't pay attention and they don't stand up for themselves. They don't stand up for what's right and wrong because they're so busy working. And you know, all That's the activist true. people that are out there are people that probably don't have a job or the paid activists, you know, you see that that's that's a real thing, paid activists. You know, like, you know, they've seen ads in Craigslist come here and riot and we'll pay you. I mean, that's that's real, real world stuff. Well, have I never got. I'd love a good riot. Yeah, nobody's right. ever invited. Nobody's ever invited me to a riot. Yeah, I feel very left out. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm too busy working. Like, I don't got time to go to riot. And I got to work. You know. Yeah, so, but how much fun would it? How much fun would it be to bust out a window with a brick? We get some free like, TVs and stuff. And, yeah, and get know? and get paid for it. Yeah, paid for it. Right, you come go. on, man. We're, maybe we're on the wrong side. <laughs> All right, yeah. I, I have to get out of here. You guys are welcome to continue, but I have uh, I have one more thing on my calendar for today. You're going to read tonight. So what are you reading now? Do. Yeah, we're reading from How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, um, that's you watch this podcast. Yeah, I took off. Uh, I took off over Thanksgiving. Uh, I took a little break from it, but we. I read five nights a week. Um, so normally Sunday night through Thursday night on Facebook. We live, and uh, just, it, it's 
or you know you, you think it's a gift to read two people so they can hear the book but in in reality it's it's very selfish i'm doing it for me because mm -hmm. it forces me to read oh, it forces me to get my pages in and um it forces me to actually physically put my eyes on the words and focus on what i'm reading and not read with my ipad playing in the background or some other shit like on. Yeah. so even though people benefit i'm really doing it for me so you know it's, yeah, it's all about the uh, accountability right the whole reason i did this we write it don't yeah. think is because yeah i'm 182 days in and i promise i'm gonna go 365 i'm not quitting now like yeah but how many mornings have you woke up and gone, now, this oh is fuck, i ain't I'm doing this yet. yeah it's raining can, can Luckily, I just put, knock on wood, I haven't had too many rainy days. So the only, the I'm surprised handlebar. he hasn't rigged up a GoPro and some handlebars to the front of his fucking work truck yet and just drives around. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I might look at the handlebars. Here we go. <laughs> Shit, no, we got right every day. Yeah, look at his brain. He's, he's thinking about it now. Yeah, yeah, he's got no, the idea there. No, no. We got that GoPro. We, we do it real. We do it real. We, <laughs> so, you know what's fun now is I got friends in the park. So, I actually go to different, you know, I, every day I try and switch it up, keep it interesting. But I see the same people in the park, you know, every morning. There's people that do their routines and stuff. And the power of good morning, I say it all the time, the power of a smile. Mm -hmm. So everyone's oh, yeah. grumpy in the morning, this and that. And now as I ride by, and I'm like, yo, good morning. And now they see me, and they're saying good morning before I get there. And it's like, it's just hey, it's the bike dude. And we talk about it's relationships, right? Real estate built on relationship. Yeah. It's all about relationship with people you don't even know. I have, people, I have yeah. people in the park that look forward to seeing me in the morning saying good morning and saying hello. It's fun. Then, then you wear that T-shirt that I got that says "Want to buy a house." Yes, yes. <laughs> then you're like, "Yeah, that's what I do." Uh, real estate gear. I don't like real estate gear. Is uh, warm weather. I like Texas because we don't have to mess with winter gear. Yeah, rub it in. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. except, except last year, <laughs> that was that yeah, was you, very weird. You don't have beaches like we have, so. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we got Galveston. <laughs> I mean, we got Galveston, right? Yeah, Corpus. Yeah. Uh, all right, I got to get out of here, folks. All right. Good um, stuff. Yes. All right. Mariana, it was Great wonderful chatting with you to guys. meet you. Yeah. Thank you for hanging out with us. Yes. Um, before, Anytime. yeah, Mariana's where got can, a Facebook group that she's Yeah, uh, where can people apart. follow you and get involved with your 75 hard group that starts on Wednesday? Wednesday. Um, come, come be my friend on Facebook um, and then we'll add you to the group. It's the Building Your Badass 75 hard group. All right. Yeah. There you have it. Follow Go that. find Mariana yeah. on Facebook. Like her shit follow her along and uh, get in her group all right that's yep. it from me yes yeah i'm gonna leave your guys thanks guys have, have a good a evening. wonderful evening all righty we appreciate and, uh, everyone Brian. for following every week and um yeah we'll see you all next week next week we'll do this again for some more fun again if anyone needs anything you can reach me you can reach sam reach mariana we're here for you guys that's what we do this we're trying to get back to you guys and trying to help you on your journey of life and inspire you and fire starts fire you know hopefully our, our fires can help you start your fires and we could all build this bonfire of life and goodness together yeah, so. it, it doesn't cost a flame Hell anything yeah. to light another flame it doesn't you know? it's you know nothing chris said it the other day chris whitehead about our, our goal is not so much to shine our light it's to help other people shine their light and yes. i like that a lot i like that a, a thousand lot. percent yes. so we're gonna help you shine all your right. light mm -hmm. all right everyone. i'm gonna shine my light and read a book you'll be good i'll see that's you that's it sounds good, good night, guys. all right we're checking out all right everyone have a great night and video good